you doing? It's just pure mindless vandalism. Are you mentally deficient? If I was mentally deficient, I would have missed. Check that out. Bullseye. Nathan Young is the obnoxious, foul-mouthed, and mischievous member of the original Asbo 5 from the British television series Misfits. You'd think that being the comic relief character of an ensemble cast would make Nathan nothing more than just a joke. But as the series progresses, we begin to see exactly why Nathan acts the way he does. His witty comments and creative obscenities don't come from a place of joy or even confidence, but rather pain and idiocy, which is only heightened once he gets his power. You see, in the Misfits universe, anyone that was struck by the storm gains an ability that matches their personality. Kelly, who's socially insecure, gains the ability to read minds. Simon, who's awkward and often gets ignored by others, gains the ability to turn invisible. Curtis, who's full of regret from his past actions, gains the ability to rewind time. And Alicia, who's incredibly promiscuous, gains the ability to, um, well... Come on. Don't look at him. I've got to have sex with you right now. Oh, so beautiful. Stop with him. Let's go. Let's do it now, Rook. Get up, you free. Oh, what did I do? Uh, you said you was gonna shag her. And you were getting your chap out. Shut up. It's when you were touching her. Yeah, Alicia's ability, or power as they refer to it, is disgusting. But Nathan's power is either the best or the worst, depending on who you ask. What makes his power so interesting is the fact that he doesn't even realize he has it until later in the series. I won't spoil what it is yet, so if this concept sounds cool to you, totally check out Misfits. And if you only want to see the good parts, don't watch anything after Season 2, Episode 6. Trust me. So, what's Nathan's deal? What narcissistic notions and negative nurturing led to Nathan's neuroticism? No notion of needed attention or navigating through noiseless neglect. Up next, we janalicize Nathan. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. They said, because of my profile, they needed to send a message. You let yourself down. You let the kids down. You let your parents down. Shut the f all down. You, you can't hit someone in a wheelchair. <laughs> If you haven't noticed by now, Misfits is definitely not for kids. It's a raunchy TV series from 2009, so a lot of terms used in it wouldn't be considered politically correct today. I won't be showing any of the more explicit scenes in this video, I'm just giving you a heads up. Anyway, at first glance, Nathan's obnoxious personality could be characterized by one thing, a desperate need for attention. And though that isn't entirely wrong, there are more layers to it. Nathan regularly bullies people, especially in ways that he knows will agitate them specifically. If he knew someone had arachnophobia, you can bet Nathan would hide a spider in their locker. But it seems like Nathan doesn't see it as anything more than playful fun. He lacks any degree of empathy that would be required to understand why what he says may hurt someone. Throughout the first season, Nathan constantly goes out of his way to harass one of his fellow young offenders, Simon Bellamy. What about you, weird kid? Don't take this the wrong way or anything, but you look like a panty sniffer. Pervert! <laughs> what are you doing? You give it back. Come on, we'll do a little interview. <laughs> okay. Something happened. What's that? Squeak up. Something happened to me. Are you a virgin? Hi, hi! Shut up! So when Simon finally speaks up for himself, we get a very interesting response from Nathan. You expect me to tell you anything after how you've treated me? All the names you've called me. What names? Weird kid, panty sniffer, virgin, freak. I just want to be your friend. Sure, man. 
Notice his surprise? Not only in Simon wanting to be his friend, but also because of how much he may have hurt Simon by just being himself. Speaking of being himself, every member of the Misfits gang is in a community service program, each for a different reason. Curtis for drug possession, Alicia for DUI, Kelly for aggravated assault, and Simon for arson. But every time Nathan is asked why he got community service, he always says it was for eating some pick and mix. When in reality, it was a variety of different things. Despite all of these terrible personality traits, Nathan is never presented to us as a villain. If anything, in the first season of Misfits, he comes the closest to being the main character. What's that? An insufferable bully who's not a jock taking the lead role? You don't see that very often. And I think Nathan is a good example of how to make a character that's so antagonistic sympathetic enough that the audience doesn't hate them entirely. Case in point, when the gang is being brainwashed by a self-righteous virtue girl, this show is wild, bro. Nathan finds a way out and plans on leaving everyone behind. But then, he doesn't. In a selflessly heroic act, Nathan stays and comes up with an elaborate plan to free everyone from their brainwashing. And it's in this episode that we discover Nathan's power. Which I've decided I won't be spoiling for this video. Trust me, Misfits works better if you don't know what it is on your first watch. But I will say this, his power makes perfect sense. Remember that powers are personality based, so Nathan, being an arrogant person that doesn't care what others think, feel, or say about him, would definitely have this power. No spoilers in the comments, please. When given the opportunity to choose a new power, it's not surprising that Nathan not only went through with it, but chose arguably the best new power, magic. And what's the first thing our plucky anti-hero does with it? He cheats. Come on, Nathan. What happened to the look of the Irish? Speaking of Irish... Mom, it's me. My key won't work. Come on, open the door. I've changed the locks. What? Where am I gonna live? Mom, open the door. At home... Well, Nathan doesn't live at home. He was kicked out for being incredibly disrespectful to his mother and her new boyfriend, Jeremy. Instead, Nathan lives at the community center with a diet consisting of... Come on, baby! Is that your tea? Starter, main course, dessert, and a nice refreshing beverage to wash it down. Though Nathan is usually the cause of his own problems, his family is where things get a bit fuzzy. He grew up with his mother in Ireland when he was young, and his biological father was very distant. After his dad had an affair with another woman, Nathan's mother filed for divorce. Despite being so estranged, Nathan does have memories of his father, but none of them are good. And things only got worse when Nathan discovered that his dad had a child with the woman he had the affair with. I'm looking for Nathan. Why? Why are you looking for him? Who are you? I'm his brother. <laughs> I haven't got a brother. I'm a classic example of an only child. Enter Nathan's half-brother, Jamie, who had absolutely no relationship with their dad. Initially, Jamie's under the impression that Nathan's mom is who their dad went back to after Jamie was born. But instead of investigating, Jamie takes matters into his own hands by knocking out his dad with a toaster and stashing him in his car. Dad was in the boot. Why was he in the boot of your car? Because he's a I think I'm going to need a little bit more information than that. I'm just going to drive him home, make him apologize to mom for being such a to her. Oh, well, I'm sure that would have been a touching reunion. But I wasn't going to go through with it, I was going to let him out. Are you out of your f***ing mind? It's you! He was there for you! You don't know how this feels! You don't know! And when the time comes for Nathan to finally talk to his dad about walking out on Jamie, we get this exchange. Like you never got anything wrong. We're not so different, you know. We are completely different. I'm gracefully tall, you're freakishly short. Where do you get this stuff? I don't know, it just comes to me. I have a gift. Every time I try to work things out with you, you just throw it back in my face. Don't change the subject now. We're talking about your other son. The little shit should be grateful. I am not pressing charges. You know what? He's better off not knowing you. I wish, I wish I was him. Which is made all the more ironic when it comes to Nathan's relationships. Speaking of which... Don't 
don't think about Shaginer. Don't think about Shaginer. You're thinking about Shaginer. You're an idiot. You heard that, didn't you? I'm a man. We think about Shagin everyone. Thanks a lot. From the very beginning, it's made quite clear that Nathan doesn't hold women in high regards. Throughout the series, he makes numerous chauvinistic comments that he usually attributes to stereotypical gender roles. I'm talking about getting laid. So how are we gonna do this, man? Do what? Divide them up. Cause I gotta tell you, the one with all the frizzy hair, I don't see me and her getting it on. <laughs> Cause she's beautiful? No, because she'd be way too much effort. But that other one? Kelly. Whatever. A couple of Bacardi breezers, man. I reckon she'll be good to go. <laughs> yeah, and the girls, like, do they have a say in this? Face it, man, it's gonna happen. It always does. It's biology. Or physics. Fortunately, this does change by season two, episode seven, when Nathan meets someone who speaks his own language. We should probably go for a drink. Swap some funny stories. See if we have similar tastes and interests. Overcome some emotional hurdles. And have a few huge rows. What did you do, you stupid It'll never happen again. We'll make up, and before you know what's happened, I've trapped you in a serious relationship. <laughs> that would be the conventional way to do it. After meeting Marnie, Nathan decides to settle down with her. This is in sharp contrast to when he was interested in Kelly. Yeah, throughout all of the first season, Kelly and Nathan have quite a bit of will they, won't they tension. In season two, episode two, after taking ecstasy, which inverts people's powers, yes, that's a thing in this universe, Kelly, who used to be able to read minds, now uncontrollably speaks her mind. While talking to Nathan, she accidentally admits that she's afraid of dating him because she's worried he'll turn out just like his dad. This causes a bit of tension between them. When the two finally do decide to be together, this happens. Not be funny yet, but is this doing anything for you? Well, you know, I'm a guy, we're really not that fussy. It just feels all wrong, I just don't feel right. You know when you, when you just know? I just think we should be mates. Yeah, mates. Notice how Nathan doesn't force himself onto her. He doesn't try to convince her, get her drunk, or act like she owes him anything, because uh, she doesn't. So the two decide to remain friends. As for his other friends, as I mentioned before, Nathan used to bully Simon extensively, but after Simon stood up for himself, the two actually became best friends. Yeah, seriously. Nathan and Curtis don't get that much screen time together, but their interactions are usually the same. Nathan provokes Curtis, and Curtis shuts him up. If I ever get around to making a Curtis video, I'll definitely elaborate more on these two, because their relationship is far more interesting from Curtis's perspective than from Nathan's perspective, especially where their powers are concerned. And finally, there's Alicia, who at various moments makes it abundantly clear that she's not Nathan's friend, which makes this scene all the more humorous. Where's Curtis? His phone's still switched off. Where's Kelly? Her phone's still switched off. You don't think they're... No. Okay. So who'd have thunk it, eh? You know? You and me teaming up on something like this? This is about the least weird thing that's happened to me recently. Despite her insistence on the two not being friends, Alicia laughs at his jokes more often than not. And to fans of the series, I'll say this. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if Nathan met Rudy. Special thanks to Jordan Fringe, yes, that Jordan Fringe, for encouraging me to make this video in the first place. And a humongous thank you to my cousin Taj, who showed me Misfits all the way back in 2010. My cousin just happened to stumble upon the show one day, and when he came over to my house, I vividly remember him saying, you're gonna love this show. Boy, was he right. The first two seasons of Misfits are still some of my favorite pieces of media of all time. It was also the first piece of official merchandise I ever purchased from a DVD. Check it out. It's weird because it's printed on the side at the bottom left. I don't know what they were thinking. While the series was on air, the characters had fake Twitter accounts that you could even communicate with. And on the E4 official website, there were videos of the actors hanging out in character. This was just one year before Victorious did it. Apparently they were going to make an American Misfits, but that didn't end up happening. Thank goodness. Speaking of goodness, 
be sure to follow me on my social medias, but especially Twitch if you want to see me live stream. While you're at it, be sure to follow the Junior and Marcus Talk podcast, where we talk about movies, TV shows, and whatever you want us to talk about. If you're already subscribed to this channel, please subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Junior, in case anything bad happens to this one. And finally, please check out the merchandise. Every purchase supports this channel. And Discord. So, should I talk about the other Misfits characters? Personally, Curtis was one of my favorites. Also, what do you think of the title cards and my new look for these videos? Like, I'm sure you noticed them. Like, I even got the, the necklace and everything, so... Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Is it too much? Until then, I'll leave you with this.